be Wednesday night. Family Matters with that guy, Mr. Pink, Kevin Peterson. <laughs> Lionel Messi, baby. <laughs> Man, talk about a guy that's taken over. Uh, we do this every Wednesday night. It's called Family Matters with Kevin Peterson. He's a licensed, you know, know-it-all. So don't question him. He's <laughs> licensed by several states. So, and I've tried to go head-to-head -head with him. I lose every time. But uh, the oh. good thing is, he takes time every Wednesday night to answer questions directly. Uh, go creep him out on Instagram, Kevin W. Peterson. He's got this incredible uh, website, chronichope.us, all kinds of free resources. It's not Give where you away. drop your credit card as soon as you log on. No, giving away three free tips on how to get the control of the crisis in your house now. On oh, a video. Really? Yeah, man, it's right there. I'll jump, I'll jump on that. I mean, my cat is driving me crazy. So I'll jump on that. I'm not going to. Reach, and reach out to us. This is a Chronic Hope uh, Facebook Hope. He runs the Chronic Hope Institute. He's got an incredible private Facebook page for families. Talks all kinds of uh, helpful tips. It's not to the world. It's private. It's uh, all kinds of stuff. So check out chronicope.us for all those free resources and to reach out to Kevin directly. You can always direct message me, instant message me. I don't know. If you're watching a replay, very few people do it. And then they send an email to me, which is fine, but, uh, or a DM or instant message, whatever they're called uh, <laughs> with your question. You can just put your question directly into the comments, uh, but I also gotten feedback. That's where their name shows up. But uh, so keep it anyway, we'll keep answering questions. Keep it coming. I'm not here to complain how you reach out. Um, but chronicope.us has got all kinds of free resources and it's got direct line to Kevin himself. So, man, that was it. a hell of an intro, bro. Thanks that, a lot. Well, I, you know, I'm learning that I got to, you know, fill some time as a great host as you share and check your makeup, and, you know, and all that. So. Oh. I'm learning. It's only taken like two years that we've been doing this, you know, but uh, I finally now know my role is to fill the first. <laughs> so, I'm ready. And you went all messy. <laughs> I know. My wife got this for me. Wasn't that sweet? <laughs> my lovely wife got me a messy jersey. <laughs> so with all that being said, before we get into the questions, any themes, anything on your mind, anything, the tidbits of, of Dr. Peterson, anything you got? Go to my website. There's a, there's a, a what we call a freebie video about the three secrets of how to address addiction in your family. Download it. And, and you can also, if you want to, just book a call with me, a discovery call. But that's what I would do. And just check it out. Tell me what you think. I'd be totally curious to see what people think. Perfect. I think these are some really good questions, kind of right. off the normal, but uh, Let me get give it a shot. Okay. Our son is in treatment currently, and the facility says that due to his behavior in groups, he is not able to use the phone this week. This seems like abuse to me. We can't get his side, Kevin. Well, and I totally understand that from the family's perspective. I totally get that. Here's the thing, <clears throat> and, and, and I'm, I want to be really clear with you that they have set up boundaries within the structure of the treatment program for a reason, because they've experienced this sort of stuff before. And what they have learned is that when somebody acts out and is inappropriate, then these are going to be the consequences. And your son knew this ahead of time. This, this was not a surprise situation. This was a, hey, we want to be clear. If this happens, then this is going to happen, and this is how it's going to play. And so what they're doing is modeling to you how to hold him accountable. And, and it's not about really getting his side. I want to get rid of that whole concept that there's a sides to this. You know, let them do their job. They're trying to help your son eliminate drugs and alcohol. And because that's this much, and this much is learn new behavior. So what they're trying to do is teach him new behavior with accountability. So if anything, I would say just be neutral to it. And just when he when he do when you do get a chance to talk to him, just be like, oh, OK, so what happened? And when he starts to be like, well, mom, let me tell you how this is this is nonsense. 
your response really should be, so what did your therapist say? What did your sponsor say? What did your doctor say? Oh, okay. Well, tell me how you worked it out with those people. The, the one thing I want to tell you, do not get involved. Do not go in there and try to fix this or solve the problem. That's part of the problem is, you know, you just need to stand back and be like, okay, well, let's hear it out, you know, and I'm sure you don't like my answer and that's okay too, you know, <clears throat> and, and, but, you know, to me, that would also be like, well, okay, it's kind of tells me that we probably need, if I was working with you, which I would love to do, I would say, you know, let's talk about the internal family structure of accountability and consequences and what that looks like and how and why. So long answer to a short question. I love the answer of that mixing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's because you and I have been there. We get it. You know, we understand that. I mean, let me tell you something. The, the, the crap that I would throw at my parents about, you know, you're not going to believe what these people are trying to make me do. It's just so unfair. This is such bullshit. I can't believe it. You know, and I look back on it now and it's like, no, they were just holding you accountable for your behavior. Well, I like the fact that you said there's no sides to it. I mean, that, that kind of went straight to my heart because I think in the world today, we always want to pick a side or justify our side. But mm -hmm. I like what you did there is, you know, basically just you talk, you know, kind of just just rules of like, let's not talk about that. Let's what did you do because of it? No matter who's right or wrong. I, I like I like what you did there. When yeah. you said eliminate the sides, that kind of shook my heart a little bit i'll be honest with you now when it comes to ordering barbecue get all the sides you can get okay <laughs> and then he ruins it oh what are you talking about but you absolutely get all the sides absolutely okay. go come to hard aids in texas i'm just telling you no, uh, they texas. don't sponsor us either they should be because i should have i should have a pre-show meal by hard eight but i'll you know what uh, well, we our grown son 38 just got out of 45 days in treatment. He's married with two precious kids and has a great job. While at dinner with us, he stated that he's bored with life and that's why he drinks. He went goes on this long email is ultimately saying, you know, he just seems real bored with job, kids, wife, life. And, you know, she even says, I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to be mom and try to like fix it and get into it. She's just curious about this whole boredom and why he drinks. And even coming out of 45 days, it just seems like he's really bored. So I'm going to, I'm going to take the last part first. He's bored with life and that's why he drinks. Yeah. That's nonsense. Um, you know, he drinks because he's an alcoholic. Next question, you know, and you know, there's a great line in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous that says, Men and women drink because they like the effect produced by alcohol. Well, that's it. It's not because of the, you know, the vernal equinox or, you know, mercuries and retrograde or any of that nonsense, that crap. You know, it's not, a, it's not about any of that nonsense. Oh, my life is so boring. That's why I have to drink. That's just crap. He's selling you a bunch of crap. He's probably been selling it to you for quite some time. So let's be clear. Don't buy into that. That's nonsense. If he's bored, get a hobby. Go to the gym. Oh, I don't know. Go to an AA meeting. You know, get deeply involved in the service side and the service structure of AA. I think it's great that he's got a great marriage, great kids, and a great job. That's great. If he's and if he's bored, then go to the gym. You know, buy a dog. You know, there's a million things you can do to entertain yourself. It doesn't have to be alcohol. He's just using that as his excuse, and he's getting you to buy the excuse. So this is where my big thing is: is that. Um, it's not, I'm, not, I'm glad that he's sober, but now the family has to change their perspective as well. You know, it's not just about, oh, he's sober and everything's all better because that's not the case. You know, he's sober and I'm happy he's sober, but now you, the family, have to change your perspective about alcoholism and drug addiction and, and that sort of behavior. And, and you know, what, what would I say? I'd say, wow, what did your therapist say about that? What did your sponsor say about that? What do your friends in AA say about that? you know, and put them on the spot. Sorry, same answer. <laughs> All right, Kevin, we were just told by the facility my daughter is at that we are not invited to the family program that my daughter and her husband decided it was best. I know it's the husband leading this. 
Yeah. You know, um, this and one. She went on and said that she's got all the secrets and basically she's got all the dirt on husband and, you know, daughter and they're, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. And I get that. I Let me tell you the number of times I've heard that from when I'm doing work with a family where someone calls up and, on the side, on the slides, like, hey, I need to tell you the scoop. And I'm like, no, you really don't. You know, what you need to do is just be patient and allow things just to flow through. Right now, daughter's at treatment, great. Let's keep her at treatment and get her better. And if she and the husband have decided that it's best for them to go to family program without parents, I can, that's fine. I completely applaud that decision. Um, what I would say as mom and dad, you know, you definitely uh, have the right when, when she gets done to be like, hey, you know, we would like to talk to you about some stuff that are concerns that we have in the structure of family therapy. Not in a, you know, we're gonna we're gonna corner you and give, put you on blast. That's that's not acceptable. And you're not you're not the family whistleblower. That's not how this works. That's that is an old role that I'm t officially taking you out of. It's not your job, okay? And it's not your responsibility. Now, 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 hold on. A couple of small things. If there is physical abuse going on, domestic violence, then you do need to report that to the treatment center and to whoever the authorities, number one. If there are children involved and they are at risk, you need to report that. That those are those are the rules. Those are the rules and regulations. No questions asked. Other than that, this is one of those situations where you need to let her do her work and them do their work and see what happens. And then ask for an opportunity for you to participate and, and engage with her and say, hey, you know, we would like to be part of the recovery process as well. And I have one more statement on that. And, and I want you to walk in having read Codependent No More, having read my book, Chronico Families and Addiction, and doing your work. You don't get to walk into that situation and put her on blast. That is completely unacceptable. You need to do your work so that you're showing up in your recovery as well, not just in her recovery. Now, what's the definition i get this what's the definition of like abuse and that the ch children are in danger because i know in these situations well so and so has been you know drunk and high none you know the kids are being you know like sure. so what's the definition of abuse and in, in danger well so because so you know that they'll always say that they're in danger and there's abuse and so my question is, okay, tell me, give me the, tell me what happened. Give me the story. And that's where a trained professional, I mean, you can always call the county hotline and say, hey, my son-in-law is putting the children or my wife, my, my daughter at risk. And the county will do the evaluation. It's really not for the family to do the evaluation themselves. That's the answer. The answer isn't, here's the textbook. The answer is, if you feel like something's wrong, then put it in the hands of the professionals and let them take it from there, you know, and, and call the, call the treatment center, call the, uh, call the county agency, call child protective services, call the cops and say, Hey, I know for a fact, and they're going to want to know facts, not your supposition or not your, you know, here's what I think is happening. But if you know for a fact that people are, that they're driving the car with the kids drunk, you, you need to let the, you know, let the people know that. That's just a reality situation. And they'll do a wellness check or they'll come in. But, you know, again, this you're, you're not the family whistleblower. This is not your job. Put it in the hands of the people whose job it is. The county facility, whatever, wherever you live. I don't know. Sure. You know, whatever. Would it be appropriate if they called with the counselor and just said, hey, I just want to, I don't know if there's abuse or danger. Can I just, you know, kind of go my side and just pl place it in the clinician's hands is that is that uh, the whistleblower well i mean here we here we are with the sides again <laughs> and 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 so um you know look i get that and i and i understand where that's coming from the desire to um make sure that the clinician has all the information necessary sure you're welcome to call them or send them an email or write them a letter whatever you want that's sure. fine what happens after that is none of your business and that's that tends to be the big issue is like, well, I called and they never called me back. And, and, you know, nobody's telling me anything. I'm like, well, you really don't have a legal right to know anything. You know, that's the reality of the situation. And I mean, even I, I even got this the other day. 
I'm paying for it. I should know exactly what's going on. I'm like, no, no, and no, that's not how this works. You don't get to know what's going on. This is a protected environment. Uh, that person is over 18 and they get to make their own choices and decisions. And if they choose to share it with you, great. If they don't, that's okay too. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. How about that? 20 year old son has a history of binge drinking. He's a great student. He does not drink for weeks, months sometimes, but when he does drink, he drinks heavily. I saw it firsthand this summer. He's back at college. She wants to know, is this just college age? Is this college stuff? Where's the, you know, she's concerned about when he's, when he, it sounds to me like when he drinks, he, he drinks on the weekends, he's responsible, but, She's there's enough, I guess, that you raise a question that you bring it to our attention. So there must yep. be some concern. Okay. Here's the deal. There's like this there's this whole new term of oh, you know, he's a binge drinker. That that doesn't make him an alcoholic. Let me explain to you what alcoholism is. And I know you know, Jay. <laughs> you know, alcoholism is not I drink every morning. You know, I, I go to drunk. I go to work drunk. I, I mean, it's it's. I, I I push a shopping cart around the mall, you know, and have a trench coat and live under a bridge. Those aren't alcohol. I mean, they could be. I mean, but alcoholism is alcoholism is about the inability to control the amount you drink once you start drinking. What we talk about is something called the phenomenon of craving. And the phenomenon of craving is once I start, I cannot stop or predictably control what I'm doing. Sound familiar? That's kind of the definition of binge drinking. And I don't care if he does it once a week, once a month, once a year. When, when, when you drink like that in that, that fashion and you kick in that, that phenomenon of craving, you are stepping into the territory of alcoholism. And, and so I would definitely have a conversation with him and offer him some solutions. Ask him, I don't care how old he is. You know, it doesn't, being in college doesn't make this okay. I, I'll tell you, I have one, dot, one niece in uh, college and one just graduated. My sister and I used to talk about this before they went. I said, you know, there's this bizarre concept where we think binge drinking in college is acceptable. And you know how dangerous that is for like women? I mean, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. And, you know, and it's, and, and for men, you know, but I mean, it's just like, what are you doing? This that doesn't make it okay. Um, and, and so offer him some solutions, offer to provide him. You want to talk to somebody? Do you want to, would you be willing to meet with someone? You know, I'm, I'm worried about it. By the way, when you come home for the summer, that's not acceptable behavior. We're not okay with that, you know? Lay down some boundaries. And if I were you, if things, I mean, he may, if he's a great student, that's fantastic. That doesn't make it okay. Let's and don't you dare use the term functional alcoholic with me. That that does not make it okay. That's absolutely <laughs> unacceptable. You know. So, so with these questions this week, I think there's an overriding theme that I don't want to turn this all into a chronic hope kind of infomercial or something. But I think <laughs> it's fascinating to me that. You know, we were kind of talking about this, I think, pre-show. Like, there's a sense that there's a finish line once someone gets into treatment or once someone gets into therapy or a goal is reached where they'll say, yes, I'll do fill in the blank. This is this is kind of your specialty. Like when for me, more often than not, all attention and, and energy goes into getting them to agree to treatment. Now there's a belief that's aftercare and so forth like this. But for mo most times when I tell families, I'm pretty much done. I'm here for support, but you should go do your own work. This is where you kind of fill in the blanks here. This is where it's just an overriding theme with all these questions. There's a huge advantage to using a Kevin Peterson while they're in treatment. Yeah. Yeah, because what we want to do is change the behavior patterns of the family as well as the individual. This isn't just about let's just get them sober and everything will be okay. This is really supposed to be engaging in the concept of let's let's help them because they need help. And then let's all collectively as a group take a look at our behavior and our situation and see how we can see if you know how we can address this together. Yeah. Because yeah. I you know, I 
I saw it, and I just when you were saying whistleblower, I kind of laughed. I mean, there was a share in our Saturday morning men's meeting, a meeting. It's it's much the same as kind of you know. There's, I'll just say, if the, if Johnny Sally gets sober, that whistleblower mentality and the secrets and whatever is not automatically going to go away. And so when you start saying you need to stop being the whistleblower, you need to stop being the fixer or something like, this is what you're ultimately saying. Like if Johnny comes back sober, it's not magic. All these other things are not going to magically dis disappear. The whole family has to change their behavior, not just the individual. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's uh, if these questions didn't just scream Kevin Peterson, I was like, oh, my God, I think Kevin's going to love these questions and and so forth, because this is really where there's there's definite advantages. And I know families, I get it a lot. I mean, this is a huge especially when you're talking about going into inpatient or any kind of treatment or therapy. There's a large, somewhat financial investment that why not go and ex get that extra what I say warranty and start working and doing your doing some family support guidance and work. It's just that extra warranty. Why not just add that warranty to an already, you know, you're going to be a financial investment and insurance pays a lot of times for sure. the treatment. You know, there's Kevin can help in so many different ways. And I strongly believe like working with someone while they're in treatment is going to decrease probably the spending moving forward because oh, yeah. you hear it all the time. Oh, he did 30 days of treatment, came back and it just picked up right again. You know, we're not talking about a 30 day stay and everything magically appears. A guy like Kevin, Kevin Peter can walk through. This is a long journey and let's set up the journey. Let's set up the path. Absolutely. It's a return on investment is really what it is. If you're, you're going to put a bunch of money in up front. Why not, you know, make sure that that's successful, you know, and because the family can get better, too. So there can be some yeah. achievement if the family puts in their own work and starts doing, you know, better and the roles and the secrets and whatever uh, decrease. And there's a healthier family to come to whenever that sobriety happens or change happens, you're coming back to a different family unit, which that's is change idea. in general. So. Yeah. Yep. The ROI is immense. So, all righty. Yeah. Well, you earned your cookie for this week, Kevin. Pirate's booty. Pirate's booty. That's who Pirate. I want to sponsor us. <laughs> what is Pirate's booty? Oh, my God. This is the best stuff ever. It's aged white cheddar rice and corn puffs. And it's, it's not bad for you. I mean, it's, it's not great for you, but it's not, you know. Only has 70 calories, three grams of fat, nine carbohydrates, you know. Well, we put the word out. You know, you know pirate booty better get back to us. So we'll yeah. do this again next week. All right, brother. All right, I'll see you. <laughs>